In this video, I'll be talking about the pathophysiology of burn. What I will not talk about are the different degrees of burn. That's not something we have to know for step one. And also, what happens when there is a burn? I mean, if you burn a tissue, obviously it's going to lose its function. Or if you burn nerve endings, you're going to lose the ability to feel pressure, pain, whatever at that particular receptor. So those things are common sense. I will not talk, up, talk about that. I will only talk about the path, pathophysiology of burn in this particular video. So what happens is if there is more than 30% of your body being burned, this will affect your circulatory system. And what happens is when a patient is burned to that extent, 30% is a big chunk of your body mass. When that much of your body is burned, the body goes into a certain kind of shock. And what happens when the body goes through a shock? It starts being very permeable. So the vessels start being very, very permeable. Imagine that this is our vessel and this is me showing that the vessel is very permeable once there is a burn victim. As the body becomes more and more permeable, fluid, plasma, is going to leak out of our blood vessels onto our interstitium which is going to cause what? Which is going to cause fluid to accumulate in our interstitium. That's going to cause edema in our interstitium. So as we are, as we are losing fluid from our blood vessel, the blood is becoming very, very concentrated at this point because all the red blood cells are inside. It's just that we have lost uh, water from our blood. So what happens next as we lose fluid? Our organs, such as the kidney, our GI tract, suffers. Less blood flow happens through our kidney and through our GI tract. This is going to lead, or this can lead to kidney failure in the kidneys because you know that the blood pressure in the kidney has to be maintained what happens if the blood pressure is not maintained? Kidney fails, and it will do everything possible to maintain that blood flow, releasing renin. So one of the one of the areas where we see that it is the a burn patient significantly suffers is the kidney. What happens in our GI tract? We start to have something called ulcers. My question to you is: Why do we see ulcers? when we have less blood flow to the GI tract. Why? Think for a moment. The reason we have ulcers we, when we have less blood flow in the GI tract is because we already have acid being released in our stomach. Now there is a protective mechanism of how our GI tract is protected from that acid. Now that protective, me protective mechanism is also achieved through prostaglandins, through bicarbonate, through mucosa. All these need blood supply. And when we don't have blood supply, we lose, on, lose out on prostaglandins, we lose out on uh, mucosal, uh, physical mucosal barrier, we lose out on bicarbonate, which is going to kill our uh, potential protective mechanism from our acid. So that's gone, resulting in ulcer. That's one reason. Another reason is that when a patient is burning or in, is being burned, their body is in extreme stress. And what happens when the body is in extreme stress? Catecholamine is released. What, cate what catecholamine does is it decreases our immune system. Cortisol decreases our immune system. So that is something that is also faced in a, in a burn victim. So when catecholamine is released, what does it cause in our stomach? It will cause more acid to be released into our stomach pit. More acid is being released. There is less blood flow, giving us ulcers. You, can, you see how that's happening? So that's one thing. So first of all, we have stress causing the sympathetic system to be uh, 
stimulated, because the body is going through stress because of the burn, this causes more acid being released. As a result, because of extensive burn, fluid is leaking out of the plasma uh, from, the, from the blood vessels onto the interstitium, which causes the blood to have uh, a concentrated blood. Less blood flow is happening in the GI tract. As a result, less, uh, less protective mechanism can take place, giving us a combination of more ulcers in our GI tract. What else happens other than uh, increased, uh, increased ulcer formation in the GI tract and kidney failure? Well, increased catecholamine is going to affect our heart. Cardiac output is going to be increased because heart, uh, our body starts thinking that, well, we're losing fluid, so we have to compensate by increasing cardiac output. So our body goes into something called hypermetabolic stress state because of increased catecholamine which is going to increase cardiac output and everything is going to be just ramped up in our body. One last thing I want to mention is that as we are losing fluid from our blood vessels we're also losing potassium. You know that potassium balance is something which is very very important it has it's even a small change means a big change because the change can severely cause damage in our body so hypokalemia can happen because all the potassium leaking out onto our interstitium so that can also give us a lot of problems so that's another thing i wanted to put it out there so that is my take on physio pathophysiology of burn hope you liked it and see you in my next video